Okay. Let me see who joined. Are you guys able to hear me and see me well? Yes. Okay, awesome, sounds great. Hope you're all doing great, guys. Okay, let me just fix my monitors. Okay, I see some, some names of some people that I already know. Uh, welcome, guys, glad to see you here. Welcome back. Okay. Okay, so let's get slowly started. Maybe some other people will be joining and we are recording these sessions. So you will be able to watch uh, this video later and complete the homework. And yeah, I will show you some presentation that you will see that uh, what we're trying to achieve during this course and what we're going to do and what will be, what, why this course is beneficial for you. So let me introduce myself. My name is Arthur. I'm a K lead as that at a company called Alice. Uh, it's a New York based company. It's a software startup, um, FinTech. Um, yeah, I used to work at Apple. I used, I just left company called the Luma. I was there as a K manager and right. I just joined this startup like a month ago and building and it, both an Apple at Aluma and actually at Alice as well. I'm building a process from scratch and will be sharing my knowledge with you today as well. Any questions so far? Anything specific you came for and maybe you can you have some specific questions for me, please, please feel free to turn your microphone on or type your question in the chat. And yeah, I will be just answering the questions as soon as I can. Okay, seems like no questions so far. So let's get slowly started. Let me share my screen. Let me move all the participants over here. Chat, let me open my presentation and share my screen. Okay, are you guys able to see my screen now? Oh. I need to start charging my computer. Okay, I see some thumbs up. I see some yes. Okay, good. So let's get started. So, do, 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 do. so the goals. Goals of this course is for you. So there are different people who joined this course. Some people, they already know that they will be taking the main course and they just need to prepare, they will just need to try our approach to make sure that this is the good course for them. Uh, other people just came to see if uh, IT and QA or coding is something that they would like to do and something they can do actually, because we will be doing something. And uh, this course, on this course, you will be doing like a small, small part of like our big course and you will be learning QA basics, you will be doing automation, you will be doing manual QA. Also, we are thinking about adding the seventh lesson uh, for uh, front-end development based on your results, on uh, how you do with coding basics. And maybe you will have also front-end development lesson. And this course for you guys, is just to understand if this is something that you would like to do. And if you like this course and you feel that uh, this is something that is easy for you, it's something that you would like to do, then you need to then invest uh, in, your, in yourself and then become a software key engineer and look for a new job and join IT and become a key engineer or maybe software developer, right? So we can do both. And this course is aimed at just understanding if this is something that you would like to do. For other people, they have decided that they will take the course and the goal for them is uh, just to try our approach, meet our teachers, and uh, as well as um, uh, get some bonuses, because if you complete all the homeworks, if you participate uh, in all lessons, you will get pretty nice bonuses. And also we will give a prize, special prize for the person who will raise a uh, amazing, the best bug report. So let's just, so yeah, let me go through this list, of course. 
So first of all, this course is just uh, trying yourself in a role of uh, an engineer on a project because we will be doing a small project you will be working on as an engineer. And we, on QA side, we will be working with software requirements. We will be planning our testing, writing test cases. After we're done with that, uh, we will be testing web application and reporting bugs. And on the coding side, you will have several coding basics uh, lessons. After that, once you're ready with uh, QA manual and with coding, we will go to test automation and we will create your first test automation framework. And as well, we will be having a lesson for interview and resume creation tips. And plus maybe if you do well during the coding lessons, we will also do one lesson for um, front-end development, which is React JS. Okay, uh, also you will be able to meet our team. So right now you see me, uh, Julia. Uh, is going to join soon and walk you through the QA processes uh, as well. And you will try our approach, how we do our courses. Uh, you will feel like home uh, because uh, we're like family, family style courses. We like uh, treat people as our friends, as our family members. And of course, you will be able to get bonuses and prize. Let's move forward. Okay, so uh, how our course will look like. So during the first two weeks, you, what you will be doing is manual key encoding basics in parallel. For example, today you have manual key lesson and tomorrow you will have coding basics lesson. Same next week. And in between them, you will have a bunch of homework to complete. And after that, uh, on week number three, you will get also one lesson uh, for resume and interview tips, as well as test automation. We will be building our test automation framework and writing our first tests. And we're thinking, as I mentioned, about uh, front-end development lesson as well, probably week number three or maybe even week number four. Um, okay, so how um, our main course looks like. Usually this is small course that we're doing during like three or four weeks, but usually our course looks like four months for, for example, test automation. First of all, you do QA manual, for the first two months. And in parallel, you get for free coding basics. And after that, if, you're, if you feel that you uh, feel good with coding, because if you did manual QA and you don't feel that you know uh, coding as, uh, pretty much, there is no sense for you to go to QA automation. You need to learn coding first. But if you feel, if you do that par in parallel and you feel that you pretty understand everything, you can do coding, then you go to the next level, which is test automation. You do that for two more months, and in four months, you are a test automation engineer, which is pretty awesome and pretty cool. And yeah, just had to mention, I announced that like a few days ago, our group that was uh, graduated like three months ago, uh, they everybody found a job, uh, and which is pretty amazing. So this works and uh, other, other students actually, you have a possibility to uh, talk to other students uh, in announcement chat or any other chats like food chat that we have or job uh, search chat. And there are other students in our Slack. So please feel free to talk to other students and ask them about the feedbacks, how they found the job. Maybe you have some specific questions. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me and ask me any questions and I will be uh, happy to answer them. And also there is a development path. So that was a QA path. If you understand that you like QA more than development, than decoding, then you select this path. But if you feel that you like coding more than QA, then you just focus on coding. Then the next level you take is front-end development. And this is what we are trying to see right now. If there will be people that are doing good during this free course, uh, in coding, we will give you another free lesson for uh, front-end development as well. So you can try what is front-end development. And if you're done with that, you can do uh, also, two, uh, also two courses, which is backend or mobile development. And they're pretty similar. We are using the same technologies. So if front-end development based on React, uh, mobile development based on the React native, which is pretty similar to React. And if you have React, uh, knowledge, which is the second level, which is the uh, this front end, 
then you're pretty good and you can become a mobile developer in two months. Of course, if you take another technology, something like, uh, I don't know, Objective-C, you will have to start this from scratch. Of course, you can do this two months, two months, and two months only because you learn this step-by-step, step, right? But if you, for example, select not React Native, uh, but Objective-C, of course, you will have to take separate course, which is like another six or eight months. And um, that's why this approach exists because you have step-by-step -step guide how to become a software developer. And this is, this is what we do actually on main, on main demand course. Okay, so let's start with what we're going to do on our course. And I'm going to like in high level, high details, explain you what software key engineer does. So which is pretty in details, uh, maybe it's difficult because you will have to learn a lot of things like test design techniques, how to report bugs properly, some rules for bug reporting and et cetera, right? But in general, it looks pretty similar because everything you do, you start with requirements. Imagine that you have purchased something new. You have purchased a car, new car, right? And they gave you the guide and something is not working in your car. What will you do? How you will find the information about uh, what is not working and how to fix it. Does anybody have any, any idea? You just purchase a new car or a new uh, vacuum or a new TV or whatever. You, whatever new you purchased, how you will know how to work with it and how to turn it on and do something. Maybe check manual. Of course, there, there is a documentation usually. There's a manual, right? There's some guide for you how to use it. Same here. So... This is not, not, dif not different, it's absolutely the same. Uh, but the difference is guide is something that already prepared for you. Requirements are not ready, right? This is something that it's still being developed. So how, uh, but they look the same. They just describe how your application or maybe you're testing some new phone, you work for some, uh, for Apple, for example, and you're testing new iPhone or you work for another company and testing new Android device or whatever, and they have requirements, how that operational system uh, behaves and how it works and what to do to turn it on and how it looks like when you turn it on and what to do next and how to go to settings and so on. So it has a guide, it has requirements, how it should behave and how, what it should do, right? So this is how it works. So, and you read those requirements first and trying to understand how your application, if you have a web application, everything that is being developed right now, for example, you open uh, Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger is built on React Native, that mobile development framework that we are uh, teaching you here at Techstart. And it has requirements. For example, once user opens uh, messenger, the user should see search field, the icon, and then list of messages that user send and so on. So those requirements, they will describe how that application should work. So this is, this is how it works. And you just read those requirements and try to understand, but you don't, you don't have the application yet. So at this point, you don't have application because requirements are not only for you, they are as well as for developers. So developers also read them, trying to understand how the application will work and they will be building the application based on those requirements. And you will be testing the application based on, on those requirements. Then what happens next? So once you read the requirements, you do test planning. So you understood everything. You read the requirements and you see pretty good understanding that, okay, now, I know exactly how that application will work. Now you take the requirements on one hand, the left side, and, and then on the right side, maybe you have two monitors uh, and you just put the requirements on one side. On the other side, you say, okay, this, when I open the application, this should be displayed. And you create a test for that. When I open the application, this is what I'm expecting to see. And so on. And every, you just cover every requirement by a test which is also pretty straightforward, which is easy because you understood the requirements 
And now on the right side, you just cover them by your tests, which is the same thing that you, you expect from the application. So if you do that step by step, it's very logical and absolutely understandable. Then the next step, in parallel, when you plan your testing, the development team, they develop this application. And by the time when they're done, they usually also done with their coding. And you planned everything and then you have the application. Now you have this application ready, you open it, you open your test plan on the left side and application on the right side. And now you see, okay, if I open the application, this is what I expect to see. You open it on the right side, the exact application that was developed, you open it and see, okay, is this is what I'm expecting or not? If this is that you're expecting, you just mark the test pass and move forward. You go to the next test case and it says, okay, if you click on your user icon, the settings pop up appears. Then you click on your user icons, see, oh, nothing, nothing happens. Okay, it, it's not working. Then you mark your test case failure and then you go and report bug, report uh, a bug that something is not working. So actually how it looks like, you just say, hey, um, account settings pop up does not appear when I click the account icon. That's it. You just tell the developers what happened. And then also you mentioned expect the result. When you click that icon, what should appear based on the requirements. So this is pretty clear path. Once we're done with this, that's it. Usually you start the next cycle. So you report bugs, then developers fixing them. Once they fixed everything and you checked that everything is working fine. Now you go to the next cycle and you develop another part of the application or another application or uh, another functionality, maybe some new functionality. Uh, maybe you saw that when you're uh, using Facebook or any other application, they have updates, right? They have something new released and this is how it works. So people are working on in the cycle, developing something new. They then they release that to the customers like you, and you start using that new functionality, new features, and they go to the next cycle. Again, working on the documentation for the new features, planning, testing, then testing it actually, and then reporting bugs, and then fixing bugs, checking that they are fixed. And once everything is done, everything is behaving correctly, then, then they release another version of the application to you as an end user. So pretty clear uh, and simple cycle. Questions regarding this? Maybe something you didn't understand or you need me to repeat or whatever. Just any question, guys. Okay, awesome. Seems like everybody understood everything. So let me, let me move forward. Okay, for example, so let's take an example. We have a uh, requirements. So we have a login form, right, on the left. This is just a mock-up, just design spec. Uh, you don't have an application, but designers, they created this design spec for our developers to base on something, right? To say, okay, this is what we're trying to develop, and this is what you will need to implement. And this is how your, our, our login form will look like. And they also write requirements. Let's say we have requirements for login button over here. And it says login button should be displayed below the login form. So again, just to understand, just maybe explain more. So we have requirements for email field, for password field, for remind password, and they just somewhere over here. So you read them, you understood them, and now you're just reading the part about login login button you read okay login button should be displayed below the login form everything is clear for you yeah on design spec it looks the same okay and login button is blue so pretty much everything is clear you understood everything and you pretty much understand that login form should look like this right even you don't have the application yet, but you understand that login form should look like this and login button should be displayed below the login form and it should be blue okay sounds good then what you do, you go and write your test cases. And these cases are very simple, actually. You just use your requirements and based on, based on them, you create your test case. In this case, login button displayed below the login form. <laughs> if you see that, just a copy paste. 
Of course, they 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 uh, said here should be displayed below the login form, and you just like state login button displayed below the login form, and you will be marking that either pass or fail when you will be testing. Okay, the second requirement is the login the button is blue on that. Gibbon Spark, uh, Gibbon Spark, tennis на корту. Там стоял мексиканец. Hey, Maria. Я не знаю, там стоит каждый день. Это было в желтых, а желтых нету. Там хотите желтый? Maria, we can hear you. Смотрите, но я там не видел желтые. Я ни разу не видел желтые. Это в субботу. Возле теннис на корту. Don't they have a here? Let me maybe. Он вот такой вот огромный. 12 долларов. Но он был громаднейший. Он как, наверное, три Я не знаю, как Марусу приучить, чтобы она не забывала папку. Это уже вторая неделя, и это уже второй раз она забыла папку с домашней работы. Они получается, что делают 50 процентов, как будет домашка. Завтра тебе придется две домашки делать. А ты что сама не знаешь? Я не, как ты что ты делаешь? Как с пустым рюкзаком идти домой? Я не понимаю, Мария. Yes, I'm back and seems like yes, I'm able to meet people right now. Can you able to uh, are you able guys to hear me and see me again? Yeah, yeah, looks good. Yeah, let, me let me share my screen again. Okay, let me close this. Oh man, where's that? Where's my presentation? Okay, present. Okay, so we have these requirements first. Oh man, why, why I don't have my nice background? Okay, let it be without background first. Uh, so you have the requirements and then you create your test cases based on those requirements, which is pretty simple. You say, okay, the login button should be below the login form and the button should be blue. And you have a bunch of those test cases, like based on the requirements. Sometimes the requirement is, a, there is a single requirement, but for you is like, it's a bunch of test cases. For example, if they say um, password field should accept uh, from five to 15 characters, you will need to add more test cases. You will need to add that four characters is not accepted, five characters is accepted, 15 characters is accepted, and 16 characters are not accepted, right? So you will need to create more test cases based on one single requirement, but in most of the cases, it's just like copy paste. You have login button below the login form, and you just create a test case. Login button is, the, is below the login form. Login button should be blue, login button is blue. Then, in parallel, when you create your test plan, uh, developers, they are creating the application. And once you have the application, you start testing. You take your test cases and start executing them. Uh, executing means like going one by one and just marking them pass or fail. Just checking if that's uh, implemented in the application or not. And then you go and see, okay, login button is displayed below login form. The answer is yes or no in this case. This is the application. Yeah, feel free to turn your microphone on or send a message in the chat and just say yes or no. Yes. Okay, I see yes from Michael. Anybody else? Is login button below the login form or not? I see from Victoria. Yes, 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 yep. that's true. It is below the login form. So you mark it as passed and go forward. And then you go next and see login button is blue. Is it blue or not? No. 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 Not blue. Yeah, obviously it's not blue, so you just mark it as fail. And at this point, when something failed and you have the difference between actual result and expected result, right? Because you expect blue and actual is red. And you go and report bug. And you report bug report, you say, okay, open the application, pay attention to login form, an actual result. Login button is red, 
expected login button is blue. This is enough information for developer to understand what needs to be done and how to fix it. That's it. You report bug report, you assign that to developer, developer just sees the bug report, fixes it, then returns that to you saying, hey, it's fixed, check again. You go again, open the application, it has a blue background now, and you close this bug report. And once you're done with all the test cases, once you're done with all the bug reports, that's it, nothing to do in this cycle. You go to the next cycle and you again work on the requirements. Maybe you develop login form in the first cycle. In the second cycle, you uh, develop remind password form. And the third cycle, you will be developing like user account. Once you log in, you have account in, inside. And it will take like 10 cycles to create some something working that will be delivered to the first customers. And after that, you will have like 100 more cycles and so on. So it depends on the uh the company and you know, depends on the product and so on so it and this is how you work this is how your uh, uh your regular key work looks like those cycles when you work on requirements then test cases and test cases based on, on requirements and once you have test cases it's pretty simple for you just to go and mark them pass or fail just going through the application and seeing okay if this is working yes Pass, working, yes, pass, working, yes, pass, working, no. A fail and bug report, bug report. Then you execute everything, every test case. Then you go and check bug reports. If they are fixed, you close them. If they are not fixed, you send back to developer until they fixed. And once you have everything fixed, you go to the next cycle. Development team also go to the next cycle. They work on the requirements. They go and create the application. You go and create your test plan and so on and so on. Just spin questions regarding this. Is it difficult for you so far or it's pretty simple? So how do you think guys so far at this point? Okay, please, please feel free to. Clear enough, know. thank you. Okay, good. I'm, I'm just looking for from my beautiful backgrounds, but I, I not, I'm not sure if I can turn them from here. Meeting info, no, 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 camera, probably not. Oh, video, spiritual background, okay, nice. Oh, I like this one. Or maybe this one. Oh. I like this one more. Okay, let it be this one. Okay, okay. So this is it for uh, for the presentation. Uh, now the next step will be going to the ex exact requirements we're going to be working on. And let me probably go and share the link with you, guys. So, to 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 copy link. I will go to our Slack. And remember, there is a chat that I shared today. August, pre-August uh, 2021. This is will be our working chat that we'll be, we will be co collaborating in and we'll be sharing all the homeworks, all the questions, all the communications in the team. Everything will be happening here. So I will post uh, this link over here. This is the requirements for, the, uh, for our application that we're going to test. Not now. Okay. And you're just, you can click on them and open the, uh, the requirements and you can start looking at them. And we're going just to go here and over you then with you. So, so this is how we starting the course. So, uh, the presentation was just to introduce what QA is, but what we're doing right now, this is the exact requirements for the application we're going to develop. So you start working on the requirements and now I'm going to show you how, uh, how it works. So first of all, when you come to the requirements, uh, they are not super clear. Hi, Julia. Yeah. Hello. I just joined. Sorry. Yes. I had hello. a working meeting, so I could not join. Yeah, yeah. So everybody here is super busy. We have like super, <laughs> super awesome professionals. Everybody's super busy. Sometimes we're having like late meetings and we have to shift our lessons a little bit, but today I was uh introducing the course anyway so julia had a chance to 
finish the meeting. So please welcome Julia. Julia will be your uh, manual uh, key teacher, and she's super amazing. She's key lead as a startup. I she will. I believe she will introduce herself. You have that nice presentation, right, with your slide, like who you are and. So uh, not handy, <laughs> I believe, right now. But I will talk about myself. Uh, yep, shortly. So I can send you a link to my LinkedIn account. Uh, actually, and I will post it in the chat and Arthur, you can like open it because like, what, like saying the, like, like what, well. yeah, what is telling the best, right? Uh, about the person in LinkedIn account, I mean, in his profession. So my name is Julia, Julia Stepico. Uh, I'm a lead at the debate machine learning startup. Currently I'm a, uh, teacher of uh, QA manual course at, uh, yes, in our courses and tech start. And uh, yes, so thank you very much, Arthur, for introduction about like what our courses are and um, the project that we're gonna work on. So um, today that was our, Idea like I can probably I will be sharing the same <laughs> page. Yes. I'll, I'll be sharing until you tell me. Okay. Yes. Um, so, yep. And for this project, for this project that we prepared for free lessons, I'm gonna, I would say I'm gonna play a role of, uh, uh, business analysts actually because i was the person who had an idea about this project so um and we are gonna go through all activities that uh qa manual engineers they're doing um during their like regular workflow so you could make sure that actually that's uh, not something uh, very hard. So, and so you could actually try it out. And so you could decide for yourself. Uh, um, do you like it or there's no or actually, <laughs> you will like it. <laughs> I it. So, um, yep. Yeah. So what we prepared Probably, yes, let me start sharing the screen so I could, um, yeah, navigate through the documentation. So, the same document on the Google Docs. So, we prepared some requirements. What are the requirements? That's actually some documentation that um, describe how the application should work, right? And QA engineer, they see the document. This is the first what they work with. If you think that QA engineer, they're like coming and starting clicking on something um, and like checking, is it work or not? So yes, but sometimes it is sometimes and it's called exploratory testing, right? When you're clicking on something and trying to see, okay, how it works. So are there any errors or whatever, but how as a spe specialist, you can say um, it's working correctly or it doesn't work. Where you get this like expected behavior, expected result, how you can judge that it's actually true or false. So for this, you need some kind of documentation, right? Some kind of guidance uh, provided by whom? And I already told you that I'm gonna be working with you today as a um, business analyst. Yep, I can, I can, I can share the link to the chat too, absolutely. So, mm, because like you need the person who had this idea and who understand how it's supposed to work. So that's gonna be me. 
But at the same time, I will be working as your QA lead who will kind of um, provide some direction for you and show you what we're going to do. And let's just have fun together. What is our application about? Um, first of all, you need some kind of business background. So um, it means like high level description, what it is uh, and um, because first of all, when you're like, like looking at documentation, it seems scary. What is it? Table of content and how many pages do we have here? Like five, not, not, not so many, but of course for couple weeks of free lessons, that's more than enough and you'll see. So the overall general background of this application that we're going to work on is um, this is going to be a simple web application that we call get in line. And that is actually um, a screen one page application that uh, help us to regulate a queue. People in line that uh, came for vaccination. So um, our uh, recipients, they uh, should be registered and they want to, as a users, they want to understand what uh, is their place when they're going to be like their turn, right? So, and we created this one page application that actually can provide uh, this functionality. So uh, usually, um, so this is idea described as a user story um, that actually give, uh, gives us the main functionality of the application, how it works. Um, yep, and that's probably what I actually just told you. We always, when we are in some kind of line, we want to see how many people uh, before me, right? And we can estimate like how much time I will be spending there or maybe I, I'm going to quit. Uh, requirements, uh, like this documentation, it can be in absolutely different forms. It can be uh, really um, as a Google Doc. It can be some kind of user manual. There's a many different types, and during the course we, we're kind of going through uh, several of them here. But basically, any source of the information is good if it's actually described in a good order and uh, like it's in good shape. It's just good for us as a test engineers. It's easy to work with. And here we are like it because we have not only description of the functionality, how it works, some kind of requirements for some specific fields and so on, but also we do have uh, design. Um, <sighs> <laughs> so what type types of tools we will use in our test cases today everyone talks about the vaccination yeah um, because it's free course we're going to use free tools for uh, writing test cases and probably we'll be filling in some templates in, in spreadsheets but on our courses we're actually using uh, paid application when we write proper test plans and I can actually give you a sneak peek about like how it's happening. Uh, but you know what? Um, I tried several uh, different test management tools. I was uh, going through test rail for a short period of time, Zephyr, um, working with Jira, uh, very close, Azure DevOps. And for all of them, you can actually export your test cases. And we will talk about like test cases, okay? Uh, sorry if I'm mentioning some words that sounds like what she's talking about. So <laughs> I, I will explain everything, right? So, but 
all specific test management tools, they have uh, this ability to export your uh, documentation, your test plans, uh, your work actually in XML format, for example, or CSV format. And you can feed your documentation to other tool with some corrections. So basically, any spreadsheet like Excel or Google spreadsheet is great for writing test cases. And um, usually I show a couple life hacks how to write like uh, very, uh, some of test cases very fast, how to create like a lot of test cases just like this with spreadsheets uh, because I love them and then you can import them back to your test management tool. So, um, but let's start with requirements and this is um, the main goal. We are, okay, yes, uh, Arthur is helping, uh, yeah, in the chat. So, great, let's go back to our requirements right now. Uh, our goal right now as a QA engineer so go to, uh, is uh, uh, going through requirements, reading them and trying to find any uh, inconsistencies, anything that seems strange, anything that um, kind of doesn't fit at what you are. But the main goal is understanding. Like you need to understand what the application is about, how it works, and try to imagine how it works. Because first of all, um, you're not gonna like start testing application right away. Mm -mm. You have to come up with a plan, how you're gonna test it. Uh, you have to put it down and then you will be testing accordingly to your plan. And guess what? You are pre you are working with documentation and preparing this test plan in parallel with developers who are working on creating uh, the application. So, uh, in real world, what's happening? Some documentation is created, and it's uh, kind of you are getting this documentation. Developers are getting this documentation. Developers are going and writing the code. They're actually developing the uh, uh, application. You are planning how you're going to test whatever they uh, implemented. So, and you're working in parallel. As soon as developer like produce some kind of um, version of the application, you will be testing it. Um, five in back reports, developers will be fixing them. Everyone will be having fun. So, <laughs> but what's our goal? Yes, uh, get to know the application even before we can see it. So um, great thing about this uh, requirements, we have a design. Design will help us to understand how it works. And I will be explaining um, the functionality of this application based on the wireframes, based on the design. So <clears throat> here, you, you have an access to the requirements right now. And here on the first page, there is a link. Please uh, take it from the page. Um, link uh, protected with this uh, simple password, hello world1234. You will be navigated to this page. Um, this page, it's kind of four screens that goes from one to another. And these screens, they're gonna demonstrate to us how the application works. And of course you have me that is uh, telling you how it's gonna work. So basically I will be explaining what is written in the requirements because I'm playing uh, the role of business analyst who knows how, how to do it. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, when we open the application, 
and this is like one page application, right? We will see the page with four different areas. They're going to be a text area that consists of three lines. And it actually says how many people we have in the line, like overall. Um, if you will be going through the requirements, it's actually very strictly described how many lines, what is the text in our in each line. And here we have general text with X people, where X is how many people we have. Mm -hmm. uh, another element is the picture. Like and it should be located on the right on the top right. Um, and actually it should look like this, exactly this picture. It shouldn't take like uh, more than a quarter of the whole overall space. So, yep. And this is, this is it, what we know about uh, this part of the requirement. The next part is a table. Um, table consists of the header, and right now I'm actually throwing at you a lot of uh, kind of design terminology that is uh, that we use uh, in uh, QA, uh, like because probably when you are looking at any page, uh, like any application, you're not thinking about specifically how you call this element or that element on the page, right? So this is your opportunity to learn uh, like how we call all these elements. On different projects, it can uh, be called differently. Uh, and when you work with um, anyone who conduct any free lessons, paid lessons, uh, if they work for some kind of project, you're gaining their experience too, because you're kind of absorbing this type of information. It's very, very, very useful. So, uh, table has a header with um, um, like these names of each column, right? Number, it, it's going to be like numbers, column with numbers from 1 to X. How many people we do have? Uh, it has um, actually vaccine recipients uh, and it shows the name and the first letter of the surname of the people, how they registered in the system. And it shows an ID, ID that consists of a letter and three digits. Um, and right now, while, while explaining, probably in in couple minutes or five, 10 minutes, you will be burning with a lot of questions probably. Um, so by, and one more thing, um, what do you think, guys? And I would like you to answer me with the voice. What is it easier? Uh, create a document and describe everything with words or create a wireframe? I mean, this like pictures like this. What do you think took more time from the person um, uh, creating this one or the, the text? describing like how it works just like i don't know for me probably the text is easier to start with but but creating like design is probably complex when you need to like i don't know, play with some specific system some use some specific application right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. any bets you can vote in chat you know <laughs> so uh picture is easier for someone Create picture like this is easier uh, than create the text. Okay, uh, what is easier to? So if you if you have a mistake, what do you think? Uh, where is easier to make a correction? Hmm? And this is obvious, right? Yeah, text is easier. Text is easier because immediately, it's just like opening the document and that's it. Uh, delete and you write something else. For picture, you will be thinking several times, okay, am I gonna like change it? So what's happening in the documentation very often? 
pictures, if they're provided, they're not updated. So when you have two sources of true picture and the text, uh, we will agree with you uh, that the text is a source of truth because probably it's updated. A picture can be uh, not uh, up to date. And this is our case. There can be some disconnection between picture and the text. Try to understand what text does say. This picture, they're just like providing you an idea how it will look like, okay? It's just helping you visualize. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's better for big project and also for now, uh, it, it actually will help you, right? So where, where did I stop? On the element number four, right? Um, at the same time, on the first page, with text, picture, and the table, we have a button. And this is actually, um, it, it's clickable. We can interact with this. And as soon as we click on it, and the button says, like, get in line. As soon as we click on it, there's going to be, like, model window or pop-up, something that we have on the top of the page, right? It appears and it's actually like cover some space of the page with some fields. And here uh, we can see what kind of fields and actually I see, right? Like first, first, it's gonna be like first name and last name. Uh, this is register form. Uh, as soon as we click on the get in line button, we have a register form for a recipient uh, where the people should put their first last name uh, choose their birthday and preferable vaccine that they want to get so let's check with um, requirements so here it's like pretty neat uh, description what should be in the table and I'm not stopping specifically on this point but here is how um, representation should look like because like the list can be very very long and we want to see um, like top five patients and then the, like uh, who is the last because we are interested in the number of the patients. Okay, something like this. Um, registration form. So here is actually a new design, updated one. So the form is going to look like first, last name, birthday as a standard calendar with a button. You can uh, input um, the date from the keyboard. You can do it. It will work as a um, input field, but at the same time, you can click on the calendar. There can be standard one that will uh, present with uh, days, months, year, and you can just like change it. Mm -hmm. uh, so here is the description of the calendar functionality, how it uh, works, but I think uh, as a users of plenty of web application, you use so um, similar calendars like a lot. Okay, for uh, vaccine, there are buttons here and we call them radio buttons. That means uh, we can, this the only choice button when you can click only one of them. That means um, if you will change your mind, uh, something will be deselected and selected a new one. You cannot choose two at the same time. And there is by design uh, here, for, as example, we have uh, the button submit that we can submit our form, right? But uh, in our updated design, we actually expect two buttons submit to confirm our choice and all our information and cancel. 
So here it's actually described how they should behave and what will happen after you click on submit button. The pop-up will not be closed yet. And here it's actually demonstrated as soon as you um, filled in the fields um, and click submit button, you will be seeing like, or the customer, our user will see what is their ID. Do you remember from this uh, table, we can see like the last uh, line here, uh, user, each user, each recipient has an ID. And after they click submit, this ID will appear on the page. Um, yep. So, sorry. What have I done? No, everything is fine. Become, oh, I change. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, here's how it should behave that um, after submitting our submit button should uh, become close button and a new record will appear in the table. So if in our example, it was 167, they're going to be like 168, right? And the information of our last um, recipient should appear here. Everything should be correctly and the page will be updated with new numbers. So and this is our application. In this case, people will be able to see how the line is going. And right now, um, so this is the end of the requirements. Right now, this is a, because you are gonna go and try yourself as a QA engineers and you will be trying to prepare some plans, like how to test it in future based on the requirements that you have, you have a description how it should work. So we will be putting a plan um, how we're gonna test it. First of all, we need to clarify some of the moments, right? Um, and probably you have some questions about like how this application works because next time guys, you will need, uh, you will be testing it. So right now, this is a time, place and time to ask uh, any specific question about like how it works. And you can be uh, uh, as specific as you want in your questions right now. Uh, the next activity that we're gonna do, it's actually asking the questions uh, with your voice or uh, making comments. For example, if something is not uh, clear for you, Mm. Right up quadrant. I, I, I don't know, like um, documentation is pretty clear and good from my point of view, but if you have any questions, for example, uh, for example, like there's like this table body, right? And mm, I don't know. Like the question may be, uh, it's not described how the empty table will look like, right? Do we have any like placeholder, any picture with, okay, there's nothing in the line or whatever, right? So if you have any question about this, uh, you can uh, hover over the text, like select some text that you have question with. Uh, and click on this like add comment button and actually ask. Um, yep. And we will be answering your questions, addressing them in these comments, or you can ask right now. So what do you think guys? Uh, is everything clear how it works? Some, something happened with 
no, no, lines are here. So we start here, right? And we're going here on the registration form. We have to fill it in with some data. Choose some vaccine, submit the form, and to get ID, and this ID will, will be there. Any questions? Is there a question? Yep. Okay. My name is Roman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, not easy to understand the button cancel. Uh, the button cancel. Mm -hmm. uh, the main idea of this app, if you don't agree with your uh, number line, you need to cancel. This means uh, next people. Uh, clear place, I mean, free place for the next people. But in the end, for this app, you have just cancel uh, button, like cancel button before, before pages. Yep. So here you can cancel your bot, uh, you can cancel uh, if you're kind of change your mind, right? And decide, okay, I will not be taken. For example, uh, you're looking, okay, there's like, Pfizer and then John John, where's Sputnik, right? I'm from Brighton Beach. Where's Sputnik vaccine? <laughs> There's no, so I cancel it and I come back. Um, I'm kidding, of course, but um, it's something like this. It's before you're submitting your choice. But if you want to, re if you want to remove yourself from the line, there is no such option uh, as a patient because see. You don't have user account here. It's like very easy application, but how it will behave in real life uh, when it's turned like there. This is a patient form. This is one page application for the recipients for the patients. But uh, as you can imagine, there is a database underneath of this application and it's shared with another page for doctors and doctors will, will see the line too. And as soon as someone's turn is now, the person will be called. If they're not answering for some time, doctors will remove them from the line. So they miss their turn. That's like easy like this. Or we haven't decided yet because it's not implemented yet. Maybe uh, people who didn't get in time when they were called for like uh, three, five minutes, they will go at the bottom of the uh, line and then they can be called back, but after everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. So um, because it's, as I told already, like, as I said, it's simple application. So we're trying to remove any additional functionality. And also this is example for us, right? Uh, <laughs> for testing, but who knows, maybe I will uh, sell um, this application to uh, some pharmacies. <laughs> Why not? It makes me, and it will make me rich. <laughs> Uh, the the requirements are clear for now. I just read them, and I believe last time they were not so clear. Uh, but we are fixing them more and more every time. Right now they are clear, but I I believe once we start writing test cases, we will get way more questions because we will be thinking about every detail, about every requirement, and there will be more questions mm -hmm. at that point. So yeah, uh, we will get here. A couple questions, if they're still uh, here, I will answer. So. As a tester, I would be curious about whether or not the user's place in line would remain if they navigated away from the website. So I would say that this uh, website, um, this is some, it's live uh, online, um, like online queue, right? Once submitted, it will stay. So 
if we stay on this like uh, web page or not, it doesn't matter. I can imagine that uh, for example, when you got in some kind of center, something like this, right, inside, uh, you can uh, reach like this submit form from your app, for example, you can navigate, like there is a QR code, right, and uh, you can get uh, to some specific page or probably there's going to be um, uh, some a specific tablet, right? Where you can register. It will be available for everyone, but come on, it's pandemic time. No one want, wants to touch it. So just like go to this specific uh, address, register, and that's it. And uh, it's very easy to show on the screen, for example, right? Provide this information on screen, just showing this page. Uh, because it will be updated um, online, live. What is the line right now? So, okay then, uh, let's go to the part. And if, if, if it's gonna be like more questions, of course I will answer them, but let's get to the part of serious part. Uh, this is documentation that is given to us by some kind, uh, some kind of product team who was um, creating uh, this, describing how it's supposed to work, right? And now we are about to create our own documentation. Uh, I was asked uh, by my students a lot about like something like, um, Yes, I would like to be a QA engineer, but I'm scared of responsibility because it's a big responsibility. Uh, can you imagine you work with e-commerce application and I know cases. Uh, I work with no e-commerce application, but like with machine learning application, but um, it's easier, it's easy uh, just imagine um, it's e-commerce when people can buy something, for example, and uh, something went wrong. You missed the bug. Functionality was implemented not correctly. Uh, and like your company lost a lot of money. It's applicable for my case too. For example, if there is some major bug, for example, in my application, the customer can be not happy. They can reject using the application. They will uh, like uh, close the deal with us and we will uh, lose money too. So it's kind of a lot of responsibility, right? And um, QA engineer, they're tempted to blame themselves, uh, specifically junior QA engineers about like, okay, I didn't find the bug. Okay, yes, you didn't find it. And what? There are, it's not possible to find all the bugs. And probably right now I'm answering the questions of one of our lectures. Hmm, spoiler, right? <clears throat> but there are some methodics and some specific ways how to get close to the best situation that we could do uh, when we checked um, plenty of different ways and we can be sure that we test it properly. Uh, even though we missed something, for example, first of all, responsibility, we split them with dev teams because come on, they were developing, we were testing. So it's always like uh, hand to hand. Um, and the best way to protect ourselves, to prove that we were testing and we did the proper job is creating test plan. So you are given documentation, how it's supposed to work, and you should provide an accurate test plan or test cases, uh, test plan that consists of test cases. Uh, test plan is a um, scenario with uh, many, many steps that you are gonna be checking. So this is a document and Arthur will send you uh, this template 
the first thing that you will need to do with this template, uh, you cannot uh, edit it. So for editing the document like this, you will need to copy it. So please uh, go like to this document, to the link that will be passed into, and I hope Arthur with us, will be passed in the chat. Um, okay and in slack i think too so you can assess this document and please oh i see yay people are joining so please go to file make a copy and even myself i will uh, do a copy uh and what i would do i would put my name here and you will keep this document for yourself and you can um, like save it to your drive. I do recommend you to save it on your uh, Google Drive. So I will save copy of this document. And now this is my document and I can uh, do with that whatever I want. So, and what I want to do with this, I want to fill it in with my test plan. Um, basically, we're going to go with the easiest approach that we have for writing um, documentation. Uh, there are several approaches and we learn them um, like the most popular and um, the most effective ones during our course. But today we're going to talk about the very obvious and very first one is um, requirement driven test planning. We do have requirements, they're here. And we are going to do a test plan, how we're gonna test it. What 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 is it? I'm I'm repeating test plan, test cases. So test case. Uh, is an action that you're going to perform to check some specific uh, point of the requirement, right? Some specific point of functionality. Sometimes it's not so easy and you need to perform some kind of couple steps to check something, right? Um, but test case, it's like this action um, with expected result. For example, um, and here we already have some examples and your homework. Yes, <laughs> you heard me correctly. There's going to be a homework here on this free courses. Come on, free course, my homework, right? But uh, yep, that's true. Um, so yeah, let me maybe quickly explain. Yeah, so uh, yeah. why we're doing it, because this is an essential part of our main course and for the people who are going to join our main course and who came here to try uh, how we do this is how we actually do right the the difference will be that you will, will be working on the different projects and you will be working in azure devops but the approach will be the same there will be topics there will be homeworks and you will need to complete them and once you complete them you get points and if you have enough points, you can go to automation course. And if you don't have enough points, you have to get more points and so on. This is our approach. And in order to understand how we do in the main course, yeah, we're doing the same on the free one. Yep. So, you know, um, and doing homeworks and doing like this, uh, uh, not comparison, but what is it? Uh, we're trying to do this like spirit of um, uh, like for people uh, so they would be uh, getting some points for this and what because we're all adults and it's very hard to stimulate ourselves with uh, why I need to do it. Okay, I can just listen some kind of video on YouTube and you're very passive about this. Um, what is your goal actually join these courses? 
just why you want this tryout, right? Uh, probably you have this thought about like, maybe I will get uh, a new job right as a QA engineer because i've heard it's actually a good start i can uh, like come uh into like this it area and start with the QA engineering why not but if you are passive if you're not doing anything if you're not practicing um there's not going to be um a lot of conversations during your interviews come on what you're gonna speak about something uh learned in internet or something that you watched in video no talk about what you actually did and uh even this patience it's like it's gonna be like real application we created it and it makes play such application they make makes place we're gonna work on much harder one and busier and uh, more complex one during the course, uh, like a regular course. But right now you can have a taste what you're supposed to do, okay? So the very first thing that you need to start doing is practicing. So, okay, less words, more practice. Uh, what we're doing uh, basically, and it's like easy one, and some of it that's already done for me. Uh, okay, spreadsheet, it consists of several columns. ID, like each test case, each point that you're gonna test has its own ID. Um, why it has like this test case, it's name of work item, because this actually was um, exported from uh, Azure DevOps, from test plans from test management tool. So it's actually was by default, okay? Each test case in test management uh, tools, it has some kind of title or summary. It's kind of, um, yeah, the title. And you should put uh, in this title what you're gonna check. Um, there is like this old school um, practice and sometimes it makes it, it makes sense, uh, perfect sense. Maybe your test case consists of several steps. So you put the title, something like um, verify that, um, like all, all test cases by default, you think about um, something, what you're gonna do, right? This is your action items, what you're gonna do. You're gonna verify that by navigating to the application, user can see four quadrants. But you cannot imagine how many test cases you're gonna write like during the day even. So uh, you want to skip this part, verify that because it's obvious even without that, that it's test case and you're gonna verify that. So we're skipping it to save just time. Uh, and we write what we're gonna check. And I'm gonna check exactly what we have in the requirements because its approach is requirement driven. Whatever I see in requirements, I want to check. So the first part was that uh, our application has like four quadrants, right? This four, okay, let's check it. By navigating to the application, user can see four quadrants and we're gonna check it. Uh, and this is a test case. In future, when you have implemented application, that was sad. <laughs> okay, thanks for, uh, yeah, coming back. What's happened? I don't know. Someone ended um, the meeting. Maybe someone um, joined some kind of parallel session or I don't know. Do we have? Okay. 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 We're back. Uh, I was saying that in future, when our application is ready, 
to test, we will be uh, going and actually marking our test cases. We will be checking. Okay, if we navigate it to the application, we can see four quadrants. Yes, and we will do like pass or no, because who knows, maybe developers will implement only three parts, right? And they will forget like the picture. Then the test case will fail. So this is an idea. The next one, and let me bring, I, I like actually, usually I work on the big, big screen, like 4K. Uh, and I always put like two um, tabs next to each other with requirements, for example, and some test cases. And sometimes you can imagine what I'm doing. Sometimes I am copying. So yeah, manual QA engineer do a lot of copy paste too. So, Um, by the way, guys, um, right now there's no host in the meeting. So could you mute yourself, please? So the background would not be. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So the next one, uh, and actually you're free to choose how to, uh, make your test cases. You can describe it very granular, like uh, almost like each line, it's a separate test case, or you can combine them. Uh, for example, like here, which quadrants we are having? We have text, image table, and get in line button. We can combine it in one, or we can do them as a steps for one test case. So it's up to you guys how to do it. If you want to do steps, uh, you can uh, like uh, here, like step one, check the text, right? And expected result, it says like, one second, sorry, it will be jumping a little bit. It's just uh, like example, check the text and step expected, uh, like it, it exists, right? It's here. And you can do like the second and the third and so on and so on. Uh, experiment. I want you to practice. And uh, one of the best things that you can do, it's uh, experimenting. If you need more information, I actually, uh, yeah, I ask you to Google about this because this is another um, good thing about being test engineers in 2021. Okay, there's plenty of information you can source for it, like surf around. Internet has like a lot of information. Try experimenting and the very good thing I will give you, I will provide you a feedback for your test cases. So as soon as you finish and homework is to write like uh, test cases for the entire application for this one. And by my experience, we were doing this exercise already a couple of times and uh, you can write, it's up to you. Uh, it can be like 40 test cases. It can be 80 test cases. Because why? Like uh, looking through document, you you can be thinking about like there's no 80 lines actually here. What I'm gonna check? Uh, what what I'm gonna be checking? Right? Um, think about it. Like for example, how about this table? You can be checking it while it has one patient. It can be while it has five patients. Then ellipses should appear, right? And how about like seven? So I am curious about if you go with your gut, how you will represent uh, your test cases, actually. It's 
always cool to read how you go with your intuition and trying to test something. Or another one, there is um, some specific requirement here about the input field. It says that first name actually accept from one to seven, 70 symbols, any symbols. If you need to test it, verify that uh, first name input field accepts from one to 70 symbols. I would not recommend to just copy this and paste here, right? I would recommend you to put exactly uh, like what you're going to be checking, how many symbols you will put into the field. Um, regular one, seven, like uh, eight, like regular name, what you will put there. Are you sure that you tested this field with your regular example? How would you check it, right? So it's up to you. Uh, try it out. You need to come with the minimum, of course, when you will be at least touching each of the point of the requirements, trying to test it, but try to extend it, try to uh, come up with more test cases. This is a place uh, for um, your imagination work, for being creative, actually. And this is a part from one side, someone can be uh, thinking about like working with documentation is boring. Yes, there is this side of, of the documentation uh, work, but at the same time, this is very creative part too. And don't forget every time when you're creating test cases, you are protecting your work because you're documenting what you're gonna do. Uh, Usually your test cases, they're reviewed by someone, by your peers, your coworkers, bar, uh, tech lead, uh, manager, and they're kind of approving your test cases. If we're going like by law, right? Uh, in some companies, they're skipping some steps and going, go, going on fly, but we need to document everything because we're doing everything uh, just fine. So, someone will be reviewing that and you, uh, your work, your future work will be approved by something. And if something went wrong, it was approved by someone, right? By person who is sharing this responsibility with you, with developers, uh, like for if, if something went wrong with the application. So it's very safe job. Uh, what do you need to do? You need to convert this requirement in test cases. Any questions about this? And, uh, and then you will be submitting your link. And I do recommend you to share the link then. Um, and here, change the restriction for commenters. So I would do uh, comments on the page and I will be actually checking um, how you have you done, okay? Um, please remind me what is the schedule for our lessons? Where it's going to be our bug creation lesson? In a week? Hmm, I don't have schedule right now, Handy. I know that today is my lesson, but the next one. <laughs> Oh, I see. Um, August 30, 31st. Um, what does it mean? So the next Tuesday, they're going to be like next um, lesson when we are going to be testing the application and actually filing the box. So we're going to test based on the test cases that we have. I will prepare my own test cases too. I will be working in parallel and I will be creating my test cases. Uh, and I will be checking yours. I will 
check everything that will be submitted until August 29th. It's a uh, Sunday, Sunday evening, 9 p.m. Whatever you submit until this time, I will provide a full feedback. I will be checking each test case uh, and I will be commenting uh, what I think is good, what probably wrong, maybe you missed something, can you elaborate on something? I will provide the feedback. After Sunday, I cannot promise it because there's going to be like start of the week and probably I will be very busy. So uh, on next Tuesday, I will share, I will go probably with my test cases, but believe me, because they're going to be based on the same documentation, they're going to be like pretty similar with what you have. Uh, and I will be showing how we are testing and easy peasy, you can imagine, it's going to be like reading your test cases and we don't need documentation already and uh, like checking, is it pass or fail, right? Uh, there are going to be a moment, uh, sometimes you're working with documentation and then you get the application, it's like so differently, it looks like uh, really differently you're going to your business analyst or someone like from the product team who created documentation and say, you know what, it's actually fine documentation, uh, fine uh, implementation, it's actually, yeah, we will live with it. And what, what do you do? You already created test cases based on documentation, it doesn't fit. Um, it may happen that you will be maintaining your test cases. So you will be redoing part of them uh, because something changed, like the plan, the first plan, uh, like original plan, how the application should work and look like, changed. So we will be changing test cases too. So I don't believe it will happen in our cases. We are stable. We are um, going to produce what we have in the documentation, but please, 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 your homework will be to create um, test cases, submit them in uh, free June uh, 2021 channel. You can mention me. So this is like, um, okay, it's announcement, but here in free June, it's kind of chat, right? So um, I will post a homework here right now. Channel. Homework number one, right? And there's going to be create your test cases, vases. <laughs> create your test cases, submit them. Julia, free yep. June or free August 2021? <gasps> Sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, you're, see, there are some. You found box. Yes, absolutely. Okay. See, uh, yep, and this is it. That means like, uh, yeah, doing uh, lectures after many hours <laughs> of work today <laughs> so thank you very much yep homework number one create your test cases submit them in the thread what is the thread i will like uh it's kind of the line for this message i will show how to use it right now in a minute create your test cases submit them in the thread um Ask questions, questions uh, as a comments for requirements. So don't forget, this is another way how to get an answer for some of your questions. For example, you're writing this case and hey, it's popped up in your mind like, I'm not sure how it's supposed to work. How do I test it? So you need some clarification, just ask it, make a comment. And um, 
specifically when you're just starting and we are ready for this, there's no um, stupid questions. There are, but not uh, in, in this moment, right? So um, please ask as many questions as you need. Um, for requirements, create your thesis, submit them in the thread. Okay. Uh, feedback is, uh, feedback will be provided 100% for the test cases submitted before August the 29, Sunday, 9 p.m. After that, maybe, I'm not like 100% sure, but I, I will try. I always do my best, but um, cannot promise. But before that, it's like your deadline. Try to do as best as you can. And also, I will edit this message. I will uh, put the link to this um, template with test cases that you can copy and um, make your own documentation if you didn't right now, okay? So I post this and you will be notified. You will be um, uh, given notification. I will pin it to the channel. So if uh, in this channel, there are gonna be like a lot of um, messages after that, you can always find this one by uh, like uh, clicking on this pin and it will appear like uh, very quick and you can navigate to it. So what means submit them in the thread? If you create your own test cases, you will have a link for this, right? You did a copy. So please share the link with me. Uh, and if you hover on this message, there is this like, uh, uh, icon that says reply in thread click on it and here uh, submit your cases here see what happened my message in the thread uh, it appeared here um, as a tail for this message right so right now you can do like I showed you, or you can click on this like one reply and it will be opened here and you can write your messages, submit uh, your test cases, ask questions, why not? You can ask them uh, here too. It, it, if it's about like homework number one, why not? Um, also, if you need my, to, to get my attention, right? You can mention my, me by like add and start writing like Julia. There's a lot of Julia's here in the in this log. So I do recommend you when you are joining some kind of Slack or some put your full name like name and uh, last name and nice headshot actually. In this case, I will remember you right away. Okay, so. This is probably all um, that I have for you today, guys. Thank you very much for attending. So any questions, and it can be questions not only about like what we learned today, but whatever questions you have for me. <laughs> okay. A lot of information. Everyone is working on their test cases already. I hope so. Um, then I will see you next Tuesday. And on Thursday, uh, they're gonna be like another lesson. And um, I do recommend to attend it. Let, let me see. There is a schedule in announcement channel. So um, that's gonna be Thursday, right? Yep, Thursday, they're gonna be like very cool class at coding basics. And right now it's very popular not to become only QA engineer, but uh, QA automation engineer. 
um, like this is very valuable skills and um, there are plenty of um, positions for both QA manual and QA automations. Of course, QA automations getting more. Um, yep. So, and also some coding skill, they're pretty handy even for QA manual. Um, even testing manual, you can create some like small scripts, not doing like de code development, like uh, automation engineers are doing, but um, maybe creating some handy scripts, helping uh, oursel uh, ourselves to um, test manually faster. That's possible too. So, and this actually uh, just fun too. So have fun guys. If there are any uh, free courses, get whatever you can, right? Okay though, um, 3 August, 2021, it was nice meeting you. Uh, please, any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, you can post it under this post or just like a, in Slack message, you know how to find me. Um, yep, we'll be here for you. Any questions, uh, feel free to Slack me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I see some like actually familiar uh, faces and names. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, then. Uh, see you next week and bye bye. Bye. Have a good day. Yep.